Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, so once upon a time, in like the 1980s, uh, mainstream America really frowned upon marijuana use. But thankfully, my parents are not mainstream. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, my whole family is deaf. My dad was deaf, uh, his sisters, my mom, her sister, her aunts and uncles, her parents, almost everyone on my mom's side of the family, they were all born deaf. Very unusual. And I know you have a lot of questions. <laughs> so I am going to just start out by answering the top three FAQs so you can all stop thinking about them and then I'll tell my story. Uh, one, yes, I know sign language. Uh, two, I know how to talk because I'm not deaf. <laughs> and three, nope, I don't know Braille. Never <laughs> had an occasion. Very cool menu that you can have uh, for, for anyone who's not, that Braille is for blind people, just so we're clear. <laughs> um, another one that I would hear, not very often, but sometimes I would get this, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, your whole family, even your mama? Oh, bless your heart. I'm like, bless my heart? I said they were deaf, not dead. Okay, think about it, just a second. You're a kid and your parents can't hear you. What is the problem here? I, I'm sure, I, please tell me, what is the problem? Um, on top of this, my parents, they also, they worked like 60 hours a week and they had a super long commute. We lived way out in the woods and they had a super long commute to and from work. So they were hardly ever home. And when they were home, ah, they liked to smoke a little pot, have some friends over. And they also were deaf and didn't hear what the hell we were doing. Now, uh, yeah, it's like, what's the opposite of helicopter parents? Like um, broken down pickup truck on cinder block parents? That was them. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, so our, well, no, we had rules. We had rules. Uh, we had three rules. One, um, you know, don't talk to strangers. The, uh, don't leave the refrigerator door hanging wide open. You know, money, it doesn't grow on trees, you know. And uh, three, don't tell anyone we smoke marijuana. <laughs> so naturally, our trailer was the place to hang out. <laughs> yeah, um, you, I mean, we, we could listen to music how, uh, how, however late into the night we wanted, as loud as we wanted, any kind of music we wanted. Sneaking out of the house was walking out the front door. Just, <laughs> bye mom, bye dad, I'm leaving. <laughs> I told you I was leaving. Well, sneaking back in, it was just as easy, as long as you didn't make the trailer shake. You know, the trailer is actually kind of like this stage. It was built on stilts, so we just all walked around on tiptoes and bare feet. <laughs> just don't, sh don't shake the trailer. Don't wake up the parents. Make vibrations. Um, but yeah, in the summer times, my parents being gone for as long as they were, summer times, they devolved into like a southern fried lord of the flies. It was Every kid for himself, kill or be killed. And my older brother, he was Lord of Montgomery, Texas. And um, he was older. I, uh, the summer I turned 13, he was almost 17. And that's when the age gap really started to show itself. You know, we used to hang out, but now, you know, he and his friends, they were his age and older. And they were, it wasn't boys will be boys stuff. I mean, like, they could get into some serious trouble out in the wilds with no parental supervision. Um, and I just, I wasn't interested. I was too busy working on my library. Uh, see... <laughs> I had turned my bedroom into a fully functional library complete with the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> so anytime they were like, hey, Cambry, come on, you want to get high? You want to come on here? You want a uh, toke of the joint? I'd be like, no, thank you. I have inventory. <laughs> <laughs> so that summer that I turned 13, I'm working on my inventory, filling out late fee notices for my customers. Uh, that you know, girl's going to make some money. And I come out into the kitchen for a snack, and I see a girl sitting on the couch in our living room. A girl already very unusual. There were no girls out in the woods where I had grown up. 
and she was sitting on our couch with my brother and his friends, and she looked to be my age, and she was smoking a joint with them, just hanging out with them. She was teeny tiny, short, petite. She had a mullet that was jet black and coal-rimmed eyes and spiky earrings and bandanas wrapped around her wrists. Her name was Maria. She was 13 like me, and she was getting high and asked me if I wanted a hit. Well, duh, yes, of course. <laughs> from Maria, sure. I, I don't even know your name, but I'll take a hit from you. So I smoke a joint with my, Maria and my brother and his friends. We get high, and naturally, you know, we get the munchies. Munchies set in. Maria says, hey, I'm hungry. You, you want to go get a snack? We can go to Webb's. And I'm like, Webb's? Webb's Grocery. Uh, well, yeah, but Webb's is like four and a half miles. Uh, what, how are we going to get there? And she goes, uh, on my horse, doy. <laughs> what the fuck? You can just get on a horse and go <laughs> to the Webb's grocery? Yeah, yeah, we're, like, sign me up. Turns out freedom from this hellscape in, in the southern fried Lord of the Flies was named Star, and he was tied to a tree in the front yard. And so we hopped on his back. We rode four and a half miles down to Webb's Grocery. Now, along the way, she asked me if I want a cigarette. Oh, duh, yeah. So I take a, a hit off the cigarette, and I, I'm like, what the fuck? She goes, oh, head rush? Cool, huh? You'll get used to it. So she teaches me how to smoke. We get to Webb's Grocery. We tie Star up to the, the hitching post, <laughs> like, like you do. <laughs> it's like a bumper for cars, except it's a, yeah. So we go inside, and I buy a pack of cigarettes for myself, Marlboro 100s, and a bottle of Boone's Farm, Strawberry Hill. Now, <laughs> Mr. Webb didn't even think twice. He'd been selling me, you know, uh, Coors uh, Light and Cools since I was like, yay, hi, while my dad sat in the Chevy with the engine running, you know? But I don't know why Mr. Webb wasn't like, huh. That's strange. Why would a grown man switch from Cool's to Marlboro's and from Coors Light to Boone's Farm? <laughs> but here we go. We got my loot. Get back on Star. We head back to my trailer in the woods where there are no parents. And so, first of all, within an hour of meeting this chick, I have now smoked, smoked, uh, started drinking, and started getting high. In an hour of meeting her. Like, ep epic, bad, bad uh, influence. So, we did this every day, all summer long. All summer. It was a great summer. <laughs> I started dressing like her, and I got my, like a mismatching earrings and coal eyeliner and all of, all of it. I shaved part of my head. Um, her dad was starting to get pissed. Not about the drinking and the smoking. They were like, oh, no, if you're going to do it, do it in front of us. <laughs> that way you're not out getting in trouble. That was their... <laughs> they should be arrested, wherever they are. I, I'm, Maria's not her real name. <clears throat> um, so he's like, he was starting to get upset. Star was a little horse. Uh, Maria, she was a little girl, but I'm, you know, I'm a big girl, and the two of us on this little horse, four and a half miles, one way, nine miles a day, every day, this poor horse, he's like, Cambry, you really need to get a horse of your own. Brilliant idea. I agree with you. So I go to my parents. I'm like, okay, I got my pitch. I'm like, first of all, I'm a straight-A student. I have two jobs. I was uh, bussing tables at the yacht club, and I sold fireworks on the side of the road. Which, by the way, uh, smoking my Marlboro 100s next to the fucking fireworks stand. <laughs> but shame on Donna Price for trusting a ton of fireworks to a 13-year-old, so t -t Donna Price. T -t -t. Um, but yeah, the, I'm, I'm alive to tell the tale. I did not uh, blow up the fireworks stand. But, um, so I'm like, uh, straight A's, Full-time job, never been in trouble my whole life. Meanwhile, my brother has failed sixth grade, never had a job, and he just got suspended from the school bus for punching a kid. And you still got him a waterbed and a shotgun for Christmas. <laughs> Colossally unfair. Unfair. They were like, you know what? Excellent points. You deserve a horse. And so they got me a horse. They got me a horse. I know. 
His name, his name was Charlie Brown, and he was two years old. He was gelding. He was not broken. I broke him myself, and he was so sweet. He was so smart. My mom thought, said, oh, my God, it's like he thinks he's one of us. He just followed me around like a little puppy. If I walked, he walked. If I jogged, he trotted. If I ran, he, he galloped. And, I mean, he was, pardon, stuck to me like glue. Couldn't, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, well, I don't, I'm not Catholic. I don't know why I started doing that. Charlie Brown, wherever he is, he's dead. He's dead. Uh, <laughs> I'm almost 50. I mean, horses don't live that long. <laughs> but at the time, he was a baby, and he was very sweet, and he was mine, and he was very smart, and he was like a puppy, and my mom loved him. I loved him. He was every, we just, oh, I, I loved this boy. Oh, he, I, he followed me. Actually, one time I was in my bedroom. I came out of my bedroom, and Charlie Brown was in the trailer. He had gotten up on the back porch, figured out how to open the back door, and came into the hallway, and then he got stuck at the first turn. He was like, oh, uh, oh, what am I gonna do now? So he just sat there and waited. <laughs> and then uh, I came out, I'm like, oh my God, Charlie Brown. And so I grabbed him by the neck, and I had to push him out the back, you know, back him out the, the door, and the whole time he's just blowing, blowing his hot breath down the back of my shirt, and I just, that moment I just, remember forever just how much I loved him and how beautiful he was and and he really did just want to be with me and he thought he was one of us uh, so one day when I could not find Charlie Brown I started to get worried because I had rung the bell Charlie Brown's bell it's a cow horn thing long horn thing and I would rang this bell and it's just a piercing sound and every time I ring that bell Charlie Brown would come running because he knew he got oats and he got to go for a long walk with me and Maria to go get some Boone's Farm with his buddy Star. <laughs> I'm gonna go see Star. He liked Star. They were friends. He wanted to see his friend too, right? Well, I rang that bell and Charlie Brown didn't come running. So I rang it again and I started screaming, Charlie Brown! Charlie Brown! Where are you, boy? Charlie Brown! Ringing that bell. Nothing. Starting to get very upset. Did he escape? What happened? That's when I see him in the distance. We had about five acres, and he's on the perimeter of the land, and he's, he's not running, he's not loping, he's not trotting, it's, it, it's weird. He's like kind of like bucking and twitching his tail and flipping his head like he's got a, maybe a swarm of bees or, or horse flies around him. I'm like, oh shit, is he getting attacked? What's going on? But, but he was just happy, I don't know, it, it was weird. And he would not come to me for anything. And I'm screaming at him. And he does it like three times, around and around, loping around, twitching and bucking. So I go inside and I get my mom and my brother. They're sitting there on the couch watching TV. I said, something's wrong with the horse. Come look. And they come out. She's like, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. Look at the horse. He's, he, it's weird. It's strange. And there he goes again, just loping and twitching and bucking his butt and... His tail is switching in the wind. She goes, oh my God, it's so weird. It's like he's stoned or something. And that's when my brother tears off through the woods barefoot, runs behind the tin shed, and lets out the most blood-curdling scream. And he comes stomping back. He ate my plants. We're like, what? My plants. He ate them. Your plants? What plants? What are you... My marijuana, he ate it all. Oh my God, Charlie Brown was baked. Baked. <laughs> he wasn't swatting off horse flies, he had a buzz. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my brother was furious, and Charlie Brown just did that for about five more hours, and then he was fine. He did not die from that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it gives new meaning to the phrase, get off your high horse. <laughs> he really did think he was one of us. Thank you. Cambry Cruz, everyone. Oh, my God.